Hi there, and welcome to another pencast for the course Reasoning and Logic. In this video, I want to talk about translating statements to predicate logic. You see, in our book, we talk a little bit about translating things to propositional logic and about talking uh, about translating things to predicate logic. But it seems the second one is slightly harder. In propositional logic, we just look for phrases and then some words that are combining different phrases and each phrase on its own becomes a single letter and then we combine them together. For example, uh, I like T and I like puzzles can just become P and Q. But in predicate logic, this doesn't quite work anymore. In predicate logic, we don't have propositions on their own, but our smallest things are objects. And we need to talk about objects instead and assign different properties to these objects. So, take a, so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to take one sample sentence and translate that to predicate logic. And I'll explain why I translate the sentence like this. And I'll offer you some guidelines on how you can translate other sentences. Note that here there's no golden bullet, no thing that always works. You have to get a feel for how to translate these things. And depending on the context, different rules might be in place for translation. In this video, I'll highlight the rules that we use in this course, but these may be different when, for example, you're writing a scientific article. Now, when it comes to our course, no, before we get there, let's introduce my example sentence. The example sentence I want to use is Phoenix owns a shiny badge. Phoenix owns a shiny badge. Now, the sort of strategy I would recommend, and again, it's not a foolproof strategy, but the sort of strategy I would recommend is that in a sentence like this, you look for nouns first of all. And no, don't worry, this isn't gonna become an English class, although I'm gonna also mention adjective and verb later. Um, but nouns are usually an indication that you need some sort of object. So what nouns have we got here? Well, we've got a noun Phoenix. It's a proper noun, a name. And we have the noun badge. Badge is just a description of an item. There's many badges, but Phoenix seems more unique. Well, for proper nouns like Phoenix, we usually introduce constants and for non-proper nouns, don't know if that's a word, but you know, nouns that aren't proper nouns, you normally introduce predicates. Badge X for X is a badge. Then we continue, we look for adjectives and usually adjectives also become uh, predicates. So shiny X or X is shiny. And then we look for verbs and verbs, especially in the sentences we like to translate to predicate logic are often meant to connect different things. So they're often predicates, but not unary predicates, but maybe binary or even ternary predicates. Ternary could be, I gave the newspaper to Phoenix. Then we have I, the newspaper and Phoenix that all play a role in this giving. But in this case, owns just connects two things. Phoenix owns a shiny badge. So we introduce our binary predicate owns X, Y, or X owns Y. All right. Now let's put all of this together to translate this sentence. What we get is we get owns P, yeah, and then something, this badge that I need to introduce. Okay, uh, let's see if I can introduce it. So can I somehow move this over to the right? Is that allowed? Well, okay, not in a way that I was hoping. Okay, let me just write it more to the right then. Apologies for this. Um, owns the bee. This is Phoenix owns a bee. Okay, what is this bee? Well, B is a badge and it's also shiny.
Oh, and I also happen to know that, that Phoenix owns it. So there's this B, it's shiny, and Phoenix owns it. But B isn't a constant that I have defined, so I need to introduce it, either with for all, or if there exists. Well, I don't think Phoenix owns all the objects that are shiny badges. I think there's at least one. So there is a B, such that B is a badge, and B is shiny, and Phoenix owns B. The only thing is, I just noticed I put this in the wrong place. There we go. So this is how I would translate this sentence. Now, some rules in our course. Um, we want a predicate to do only one thing. So, for example, the following translation is not one we would like. Uh, let me do it properly. So why don't we like this? Well, this predicate does two things. It says that B is a badge, and it says that B is shiny. And in our course, we don't like this. Predicate should do exactly one thing, ascribe one property to an object. So this we don't like. What we definitely do not like is Uh, let me do this again properly. This owns shiny badge P. Why don't we like it? Well, this predicate does a lot. It says that there is another object B, and this object has the property of being a badge and the property of being shiny. Oh, and also Phoenix owns it. It does all of this in a single predicate. And in our course, we don't want to see this. A predicate should never, in its definition, include a there exists. That being said, of course, it is great shorthand. So I can imagine that in scientific articles or other places where you're space constrained, you might want to introduce these things. I won't hold that against you, but in our course, that is a no-go. A predicate does one thing, one thing exactly. And it definitely doesn't contain hidden quantifiers in its definition. So the way I like to tackle it is look for nouns, look for adjectives, look for verbs. Oh, and maybe then check if there's anything left. In this case, there isn't. Yeah, OK, there's this, pro, uh, this uh, particle A, but we have included that basically in the there exists. This is the method I use. It's no golden rule. It doesn't always work, but it gets you at least, at least it gets you started. That's it for this video. I'll see you around for the next one. Bye for now.